Digital revolution has not just changed how businesses are perceived, but also how businesses are performed. It meant a shift from the conventional means of operation to the one aided by technology. In today's age, every aspect of business from operations to management is run using digital tools. Such digital transformations have changed every industry and revolutionized the way of serving the customers, improved the competitiveness of the business, and pushed forth its expansion into the global market. The mission statement of Walt Disney Co. is using our portfolio of brands to differentiate our content, services, and consumer products. We seek to develop the most creative, innovative, and profitable entertainment experience in the world. In 2014, Disney theme parks globally had 134.3 million visitors, making them the most visited theme park chain in the world. The number one park was Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World Orlando with 19.3 million guests. These are staggering numbers to look at and are extremely promising for the company when moving forward. However, let's rewind to the point in time when Disney began to assess themselves in a critical way. In the mid-2000s, they began to realize that they were at risk of getting outdated. Because of shifts in technology, customers were beginning to engage more with brands using their personal devices and social media. Disney found itself to have a very analog product in a newly digital world. Thus, their key intent to return metric was now under serious threat. Nevertheless, the team had a solution. Initial technology research began in 2007, and in 2008, executives formed a secret team to work on reinventing the Walt Disney World experience. Disney's executive team tasked a small group of developers, Imagineering, and tech IT execs with one big challenge. The challenge was to find a way to eliminate pain points for guests traveling to their parks, such as barriers that slow down progression via endless lines, passes, key cards, and more. They wondered if there was a wearable smart device that could be used to alleviate some of these pain points. The first prototype was based off of RFID technology and acted as a contactless keycard that had multiple functions, all on one wristband. In 2010, the Disney team began developing uses for the device and developed the concept of having both short and long-range sensors. Short-range sensors used for transactional purposes, and long-range sensors are used for tracking purposes. They believed that by having this information, they will have a much easier time mitigating issues such as overcrowding and help with park flow. By having access to guest information, they could truly reinvent Disney parks. In 2010, the NGE team moved to a 12,000 square foot soundstage in Hollywood Studio Parks, Orlando. They created a living blueprint, which allowed them to test out various concepts as well as set up scenes depicting the guest journey. In 2010, in 2010, Bob Iger reportedly told the team that they were taking on too much and to reduce their efforts to focus strictly on NGE at Disney World. He even went as far as saying to the team, it better work. After some final tweaks in 2010, the NGE project was pitched to Walt Disney's board of directors in February of 2011. The board agreed and approved on an investment of $1 billion in the project which is now called My Magic Plus. The initial implementation date was pushed back to January 2013 instead of 2012, making the product fully ready for launch in the first half of 2014. After launch, one initial success for Disney was a 30% cut on turnstile transaction time, which led to an increased park capacity. Another success came in the form of shorter perceived waiting times. The interactive features enabled on My Magic Plus made it so that 35 minute wait times felt more like 15 to 20 minute wait times. A third success came in the form of intent to return, as the guest satisfaction percentages were up 70%. The switch from paper tickets to RFID enabled wristbands allowed for an alleviation of pain points, which had been a goal set back in 2008. Tom Staggs even seen My Magic Plus as a successful digital transformation of the park's experience. By January 2015, they reached over 10 million magic bands being used in the Orlando park, all in just under a year. One issue that became prominent was the fact that even though Magic Band relieved some minor pain points, not much else changed physically in conjunction with life before Magic Band. In 2016, executives had a number of serious questions about the future of the program, especially about how to make the park more digitally enhanced for the consumer. So can my Magic Plus platform be considered a success? Measuring the success of a product or service depends on many factors, and sometimes it can be seen as something highly subjective. To better understand this, we have decided to break the answer into three parts. One, the purpose. Two, potential benefit. And three, the overall return on investment. Starting off with the purpose, which was about solving the problem that this initiative was built around. In conclusion, my Magic Plus did not demonstrate a relevant improvement to the problem. And the truth is that it is logical that a band around your risk will not be a deciding factor encouraging customers to return to the park more often. 
modernizing particular features without solving the core problems will not prevent Disney parks from eventually becoming obsolete. Moving on to the potential benefit, the quantity and the quality of information that can be gathered with this band is impressive. If this information is used appropriately, the research and end results could bring an inevitable competitive advantage for the business. And lastly, three, the project return on investment, which in this case, the development of My Magic Plus did not provide a direct boost on sales, but has provided key insights that had otherwise been unavailable, providing details on the key processes that can be used to grow the business further. So, while there has been an initial success in my Magic Plus, what could potentially go wrong with so much information collected about the park's guests? Well, there are a few major issues that we have been able to identify. First off, perhaps the biggest issue is the danger that the information is not being properly secured. And if it were to be hacked, what are the potential ramifications? The idea of having customer information hacked and accessed by foreign parties is scary. Disney would have to reach out to over 30 million customers in order to rectify any situation. The process would cost a lot of money for Disney and ultimately would take away from the main goal, which is generating the return on investment. Additionally, Disney has introduced a feature that made people's names appear within attractions in hopes to enhance the consumer experience. However, consumers may in fact become uncomfortable with their personal information being accessed in this manner. Simple things that seem like surefire successes often overlook the percentage of the market that might be opposed to this type of expansion and transition. In the same sense, people don't often know what exactly they are giving up, in stating their telephone number, home address, shopping habits, and more. But once they do, the results can be catastrophic. Something as simple as a breach in another big company's security can send consumers on a mad frenzy and have them asking to have their data purged from systems to permanently lose them as a customer for life. How can Disney assess whether they are recouping their $1 billion investment and what's the value of this platform to Disney? by analyzing the data they have gathered from their customers and tracking key performance indicators, Disney can determine its true ROI. From the data, we can see the direct effect of a successful implementation, with a 30% cut to turn style transaction time, an increase in the park capacity, a decrease in the perception of customers' wait times from 35 to around 15 to 20 minutes, and an increase of average satisfaction of approximately 70%. From an objective point of view, the investment can be recovered. By 2015, 10 million vans had been sold, which allowed for the gathering of an enormous amount of data. But the problem comes with the expenses that arise when using and storing this data, along with a variety of inherent risks. After all, they will have to invest in implementing resilient data protection solutions to keep their customers' data safe. We can see that the implementation of My Magic Plus adds value to the visitor experience. The way Disney interacts with the public and how they can increase the overall customer satisfaction through alleviating pain points in their parks. What should Disney do next in order to leverage this technology to enhance guest experience? We feel as though it would be in Disney's best interest to integrate new technology that offers additional convenience for the customers. Introducing technology that allows for customers' personal devices to function like the bracelets through software. Being able to access all of the functions on their mobile devices will make customers feel much more comfortable using the My Magic Plus technology. It would also fully eliminate the need for customers to have to wear the new bracelets at all, but still receive the full experience. The other side of things, the other side of things, would be to make the whole digitally enhanced consumer experience optional for the customer. By making the convenient parts of My Magic Plus mandatory, but leaving it up to the customer whether they want to be a part of the experience. One thing that Disney must be careful of is not trapping their customers into a box. Not everyone is partial to having their names being displayed on a ride at Disney World, or their information being used in other ways. Having the option for customers to have a more granular control over their information and how it is used in the park might be the best option for Disney, in order to achieve their goals and increase the customer overall intent to return percentage. So, are the magic bands still going to be important, or will guests use other kinds of devices? Technology market leaders are always in a race for innovation, developing an immersive experience with users while trying to connect the world around us with portable devices. Nowadays, we can control our house, car, work, and social life with our phones. My Magic Plus understands Disney's mission, the commitment to create a mechanism with the goal of helping customers to get a more friendly and immersive experience while being in the park is a complete success. The convenience of having a simple band on your wrist to control everything you need to enjoy your stay at the park solves a multitude of problems. However, they are not the only ones creating these types of devices. They are certainly not going to be competing with other leading brands. 
As this technology begins to become more relevant in our lives, with smartwatches being as common as phones, the MyMagic Plus bands could become quickly irrelevant. Visitors could use their own devices to manage everything the band could through RFID and NFC built directly into the devices. If we consider the trends indicating that this change could happen within the next five years, we have to ask ourselves, was my Magic Plus really the solution? Was it really worth the investment? So should Disney expand the use of my Magic Plus to its other theme parks? We feel as though that with some minor improvements and additional options being implemented through mobile solutions, that this expansion would be extremely beneficial for the organization worldwide. Until Disney is willing to fix these current issues and make the necessary adjustments, it could become more problematic for them than beneficial. If they can make these improvements, then we feel as though having the technology in all parks would be optimal for the customer experience. Research has shown, however, that Disney is reluctant at this very moment to integrate the My Magic Plus technology into all parks. But in our opinion, this is the best option for Disney as of right now as it continues to polish this amazing component to the overall customer experience at their parks.